Do you want to build a machine learning model without having to code? If you answered yes, then this video is for you because today I'm going to be showing you a very simple machine learning software which will allow you to build a machine learning model using a simple point and click. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. So the software that we're going to be using today is called Weka, W-E-K-A. So let's Google it for that. W-E-K-A. And it's the first link here. We got three data mining with open source machine learning. So this software is built in or coded in Java and it's going to be a point and click software. So we could just simply download it by clicking on the download. And for those of you who are interested, it will also allow you to use the scikit-learn and also R and also deep learning 4J. And so I'll probably be covering this in a future video, but for this video, I'm going to be showing you how you could build a very simple machine learning model using Weka. So first thing that you want to do is click on the download. And then depending on which operating system you're using, you're going to download one of these files and then you're going to be installing it onto your own local computer. Okay, so pause the video for a moment while you download and install it. Okay, and so now that you have already installed Weka, let's open up Weka. Okay, so this is the Weka, and it's called Weka GUI Chooser. So the one that we're going to be using is the Explorer. So you want to click on this one. So Weka stands for Waikato Environment for Knowledge Analysis. And coincidentally, Weka is also the name of this bird found in New Zealand. And the software is developed by the University of Waikato. And so a point of note is that this software was the first machine learning software that I personally used in my early days venturing into machine learning and data science. And so it was back in 2005. And so at the time, all of this is pretty much known as data mining. And this was my favorite tool whereby I have been using it for several years and developing my early machine learning models. And so I could use neural network support vector machine, decision tree, random forest. And in this video, I'll be showing you how you could build a simple model. And so let's get familiar with the general GUI interface here. So you're going to see that there are a total of six tabs here. And at default, it's going to be at the pre-process tab. And here you're going to be able to import your data, open file. Okay. So let me first find a data set for you to play around with. So why don't you click on open file? And then you're going to navigate this to the program files. And you're going to find the Weka 3-8 folder. And then you're going to click on the data folder. So in this folder, there's going to be a lot of data sets here. So let's try the CPU data set. Click on open. And so right here, you're going to be seeing that this area is going to be telling you the general features of the data set. So here you're going to see that instances is 209, meaning that there are a total of 209 rows or 209 data samples. And there are seven attributes. So these are the columns. So there are seven independent variables. Oh, I mean, there are seven variables. And the seven variables are shown below here, where the first six variables are the independent variables. And the seventh variable is the dependent variable or the class variable. So you're going to be making use of the six independent variables here in order to predict the dependent variable or the class variable. So on the right hand side here, you're going to see the general attributes of each of the variables. So for variable number seven, you're going to see that the minimum value is six. 
The maximum value is 1,150. The mean value is 105.622 with a standard deviation of 160.831. And if you click on each of the variables here, you're going to be seeing that the minimum, maximum, mean, and standard deviation value are changing. And normally, in order to build a model, like a regression model or a classification model, we will be needing to do some data scaling because you're gonna see here that each variable has different minimum and maximum value or even different mean and standard deviation. And so this will be problematic for the building of the model. And so what we need to do is we need to perform a data scaling approach whereby we're making each of the independent variable to be in a similar scale. So you're going to see here that the minimum and maximum values for all of them are different. So upon doing a min max normalization, you're going to be scaling the minimum values to be zero for all of the six variables here and the maximum value will be one so let me show you how to do that so in the filter you're going to be clicking on the choose all right and double click on filter i mean uh click on the triangle here find the unsupervised find the attribute and then find normalize okay and then you want to click on normalize and then you want to click on apply. And so after clicking on apply, you're going to be seeing that each of the six variables here all have a minimum and maximum value of zero and one. So all of them are now comparable. Okay, so all of them have a minimum and maximum of zero and one. So all six are now comparable. And make note that only the class variable was not subjected to any type of min-max normalization because this is the value that we're going to be predicting. So we're not modifying it in any way. All right, and so now we're ready to build a model. As you can see, this is fairly simple. You just click on the open file in order to import the data in, and then you could click on the choose in the filter, and then you click on the normalize function, click on apply, and then you have essentially done min-max normalization. And so when you're clicking on each of these variable, you get to see that the minimum and maximum values are now zero and one. And so in the right hand side, in the bottom panel, you're going to be seeing the distribution in the form of a histogram plot. So this will allow you to see the general distribution. All right, and so now we're ready to be building the model. Click on classify. And for under the classifier, click on choose. And then in the functions, find linear regression. And then for cross validation, number of fold to be 10. So this corresponds to the 10 fold cross validation. And so in 10 fold cross validation, you're essentially going to be splitting the data into 10 segments. And then you're gonna be using nine segments in order to build a model. And once you finish building the model, you're gonna take the model and then apply it for prediction on the left out segment. And then you're gonna be doing the same thing over and over for 10 times so that each of the segment, each of the 10 segment will be left out one time and used as the testing set. Whereas 10 of the iteration will be using different combination of nine segment in order to build a training model. Okay, so I'll provide you more detail of that in one of the Medium articles that I have written. And so I'm going to be sharing you the link in the video description of this video. All right, and so let's click on the start in order to make the prediction. All right, and now you can see that you have already created a simple linear regression model using the data set, CPU data set, and now you have a correlation coefficient of 0 0.9, and then the root mean squared error of 69.556. And so this is the equation, the multiple linear regression equation of the model that we have built. Okay, and so it's very simple. And if you want to have a prediction model for your training set, you could just click on it. And then you click on start, all right? And then now you see the prediction for the training set. And this is the prediction for the cross validation set, meaning that you split the data into 10 folds that I have already mentioned. And if you want to do some data split, you could also click on here. And normally we do like an 80-20 split. So I'm going to be using 80, okay? And then you're gonna see the resulting prediction result for your 80-20 split. And more details are here. So you can see here that 80% were used as the 
training set, whereas the remaining 20% are used as the testing set. All right, so this is fairly simple. And let's say that you wanna use a different algorithm. So let's click on the choose. And the multi-layer perception is the backpropagation neural network. Let's click on that. Okay, so backpropagation neural network got 0 0.96 for the prediction. And SMO reg is the support vector machine. Click on that and you get 0 0.93. So it should be noted that for the support vector machine, the performance was not so great because we haven't done any form of parameter optimization. So this is using only default values. Let's try other algorithms. Let's see, trees. Let's try the random forest, which is my favorite. All right, so you can see that Random Forest got the best performance here without even doing anything as well, using the default values. 0 0.9737. Okay, and let's try something else. What else? And this one gave pretty poor results, 0 0.86. So a series of rules from the prediction. All right, and that's all, right? Let's have a look at the visualize section. So the visualize section will allow you to see the scatter plot of all of your variables. So it's quite small but you get to see the general distribution of each pair in your variables. Okay, so why don't we try creating our own data set and then we're gonna use it for the prediction. So let me go to the GitHub of Data Professor and let's download the data on the solubility prediction. So it is Delani solubility. So I'm going to be showing you how you could prepare an input data for your weak uh, prediction. All right, so here, let's, let's download this Delani descriptor CSV file and I'm putting it into the desktop. All right, that's all we need. And then I'm going to open up the Atom, which is a text editor. I'm going to import the data here. Okay, and now I'm going to save it onto the desktop and I'm going to be calling it Dilani solubility with dot ARFF. ARFF is the input file for Wika. All right, so actually I haven't been building a model for Wika for quite some time. Let me have a look at an example data set. Wrong folder, all right, this one, data. And let's take a look at the CPU one. All right, so we're going to give it a name, at relation, at relation, and then we're calling it Dilani. And then here, we're going to define the variables, and then we're gonna say the data type here and then afterward, we're gonna use at data. Okay, fairly simple. And the rest are just a simple comma separated value format. All right, so it's what? At attribute. At attribute. And so I have moloch p. So let me do it like this.
they're all numerical. So do it like this. And then add data. Okay. So I'm adding a empty space for better visibility or readability of the code. And I'm gonna save it. And that's it. That's all I have to do in order to create the input file for Wika. And it's essentially a CSV file, whereas you will use the following as your header of the file. And so Wika will read this as the name of the data set, and then it will detect the data type, and then the data will be found below. All right, so let's close it and open up in the Wika file. It's in desktop, the Lani solubility open. All right, and you can see that this is the histogram of the Moloch P molecular weight, number of rotatable bonds, aromatic proportion, and the log S. So let me apply the normalize, or actually I could also use another form of data scaling, which is standardize. By standardizing, I could click on apply and then you're gonna be seeing that the mean value and the standard deviation will be adjusted to a range of zero and one. And so it will have a mean value of zero. So this is essentially called mean centering and the standard deviation will become one. And so this will be called unit variance. Okay, let's do that, apply. And now you see that the mean is now zero and standard deviation is now one. Okay. And the log s or the dependent variable that we're going to be predicting is left untouched. And now let's perform the prediction. Let's use the linear regression. Start. Okay, and we have 0 0.873. Let's adjust the settings here a bit. Let's use no form of attribute selection. So we're gonna use all of the features. Eight, seven to two. And let's try the cross validation. Eight, seven, five, nine. Okay, let's try the random forest. Nine, four, oh, five. Let's try the neural network. 8577. So random forest is performing the best so far. 8752. Okay, and so you will see that in the panel here, they're providing you the names of the actually the timestamp and also the machine learning algorithm that was used to build the model. So for quick access. So you can see random forest giving the best performance so far using the default parameters. Okay. Visualize and you see the general distribution of the data set. Okay, and so if you're finding value in this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet done so hit on the notification bell in order to be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.